Okay, and uh, welcome to session 3AU of GSE 2021. This is 10 tips to reach mainframe operational excellence, or not, uh, presented by Mark, and I hope I get this right, Veshi, yeah. uh, from uh, Zetterly. Yeah. Um, please remember to fill in your feedback forms at, at the end. It's important we do look at them. Um, and also to show your appreciation for the time and effort uh, put in by, by the speaker, uh, please donate generously to the uh, charities for this year, the RNLI and the Guide Dogs for the Blind, uh, both very worthy causes um, and always in need of your help. Um, so without any further ado, oh, questions. Sorry, forgot about questions. You're all muted. You can't unmute yourselves. Therefore, uh, if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat and I will let Mark know that they're there. Um, otherwise, we'll deal with them when we get to the end. OK, so uh, without any further ado, Mark, the, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. And, and, uh, and uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And so welcome to this session. So as Anna said, it's called uh, 10 tips to reach mainframe operational excellence or not. So or not to try to a note of humor in this presentation. So I don't know if we French humor, because we're a French company, will work and fit with the British humor. So we'll see. Um, so um, Zetali, so Zetali, who, who are we? So Zetali was founded in 2006 with a mission to bring uh, greater visibility to the, our uh, customer mainframe. So our mission is to deliver an observability suite for mainframe called Zetali. So our platform consists of uh, four integrated solutions. Uh, Zetali service intelligence deal dealing with um, AI ops uh, and Zetali automated capacity, Zetali cost control dealing with uh, fine ops financial operation and uh, Zetali resource planning uh, for predictive analytics and, and capacity planning. Now, all accessible from a, a single interface. We got more than six, 60 customers in Europe, uh, in the USA, in Brazil, Australia, and South Africa. And our customer retention rate is more than 95%. We got happy customers. And this year we'll see our revenue grow by uh, 40%. So, um, so it all started in a, in a, in a barn, in La Turbal. So it's a pretty fishing port in Brittany, not far from Guérande, the famous, the famous salt. I don't know if you know that, salt from Guérande. And our first solution uh, named Auto Soft Capping aimed to drive uh, MLC cost optimization using uh, advanced uh, dynamic LPAR uh, capacity management. And in 2010, we released our capacity planning solution that uh, simulate workload evolution uh, in order to plan hard hardware requirement and, and uh, LPAR configuration. And then in 2016, 10 years after our creation, uh, we reflected on, on our future. And from this uh, reflection, we develop our Zetali service intelligence that we launched in 2018 and then this year, we are expanding our functional coverage with our new software suite for uh, mainframe uh, observability. This is for the, uh, let's say, the uh, introduction. Uh, so before going into the uh, 10 tips to reach mainframe operational excellence, so I would like to introduce uh, what is operational excellence. And so when dealing with operational excellence, you may think about uh, cost reduction and uh, productivity increase. But in fact, uh, operational excellence is not just about reducing cost or increasing uh, productivity in the workplace. It's uh, even a difficult concept to define and it's not a set of uh, activities that uh, you could perform. In fact, operational excellence, it uh, can simply uh, be described as a philosophy that in fact embraces um, leadership and the flow of value. 
So it's, it's more a mindset that you should be present, uh, that should be present uh, within you and your organization. So it's about uh, creating the culture that will allow um, organization and teams to produce valuable products and services to, uh, for their customers and consequently achieve a, a long-term sustainable uh, uh, growth. So what are the, the, the key elements needed to, to be successful in a, in a journey of, uh, towards operational excellence? The first element is it's empower people. So everyone knows their uh, respective contribution to the flow of value from production to the customer. Empowered people, they take action when outcomes are at risk in order to maximize the, minimize, sorry, the impact. And, and they are also encouraged uh, to escalate to decision maker when they believe there is a risk so that it can be addressed and incident avoided. So the second element is, is a, a, an aligned organization. So in an aligned organization, every employee should have a clear understanding of why the organization exists, where it's going, and how it would get there. So this way they can take risk with more confidence and uh, innovate and align all the action to, to pursue the, their objectives. The third part is the drive continuous improvement, which, is, uh, uh, which guarantees more efficient processes so it involves making each existing process perfect by um, consistently adjusting them to reduce waste, improve quality, and, and as well maximize uh, productivity. So that's uh, a never ending journey that uh, will ensure that every process is always uh, performing at its peak of efficiency. And the last point is visualize the, the flow of value. So Operationally excellent organizations set up visual systems to depict the flow of value. So the systems are, must be simple, so that so simple that a visitor can uh, look at them, tell if uh, they're on track and without asking any questions, uh, requesting any reports or, or even looking at any uh, computer uh, printouts, okay? So what are the, the benefits uh, uh, brought by embracing, um, embracing operational excellence? First, it's uh, improved teamwork and innovative problem solving. So when team members uh, feel more responsible for their part of the process, they are more likely to develop new ways to solve problems and improve processes. Uh, problems are detected earlier because visual systems are used to depict flow of value from the beginning of production until uh, value reaches the, the customers. And every member can see exactly where they are in the value stream. And if anything is out of place or late, they are able to correct the problem uh, at its source and restore the, the situation. Third point, third benefits is uh, the operation are, are lean, predictable, and scalable. So operational excellence demands that, uh, as, as I mentioned um, in the previous slide, uh, that uh, processes are efficiently carried out and as are as consistent as possible. So this predictability allow for um, a better planning and, and a better uh, growth. And then the fourth point, obviously, the customer are kept happy. And when you meet the demands of the customers, there are no needs, no reason why customers shouldn't be happy. Okay. So now, uh, uh, what what does operational excellence mean for for an IT organization? So, in fact, this is very similar to the the principle uh, I just introduced. And um, operational excellence in IT mean uh, how. Uh, an IT organization supports business objective. Uh, it's, uh, their, uh, it's an ability to run workloads effectively, to gain insight in, into their operation and to continuously improve uh, supporting processes to deliver uh, the business value. 
So IT teams must understand their part in achieving the, the business of goals. Uh, the teams they need to understand their role in the success of the team and as well the role of the other teams in their success. And they, they must have shared goals, shared goals. So understanding responsibility, ownership, uh, how decisions are made, and uh, who has authority to make decisions will definitely help. So when it goes to uh, how to plan and operate uh, operational excellence in a mainframe and IT environment, the key points are, and first, it's understanding the mainframe workloads and, they, and their expected behavior, and also being able to provide insight to their status, that's important. But more importantly, uh, it's to be able to build the operation and the process to support them. So hopefully the US provide tons of logs and metrics and events and mainframe teams may use this data to understand how application and the underlying components interact to analyze issues and, and performance. And IT teams should use these metrics to implement dashboards with business, mixing business and technical viewpoints that will help uh, team members make uh, informed decision and take appropriate actions. So after this short introduction of operational excellence, uh, let's move to the 10 tips to reach uh, mainframe operational excellence or not. So tip number one, let your operational data sleep on tapes. They absolutely need sleep. So this title may seem slightly provocative, but I know of mainframe that operate completely blind, blind uh, without monitoring tools, of course, uh, and without any, uh, an, uh, any analytics solution. So I won't go into the reason for this choice here, but you should know that they exist. Uh, and I might uh, as well warn you that uh, each tip title will be in this kind of uh, provocative way. Okay. So to answer to this tip one, I think the, the starting point of any uh, system analysis is access to operational data. So the data capture method should generate minimal CPU utilization. That's the first point. Regarding data storage, there are two points of, of attention. Um, first, it's, it's re, um, storing relevant data on a consolidated database. Uh, and that will allow us to create a, a single point of truth. And then uh, in order to be able to manage a data history, uh, you need to put in place uh, aggregation mechanism and a data history will allow pattern identification to define trends and better shape the future. And then analyzing system data and correlating them with business data and other source within the information system will allow your organization to, to assess the impact of mainframe performance on the business outcomes and the impact of the other system on the mainframe performance. And finally, clear dashboards uh, to share information and communicate among the teams to operate your mainframe so that it fully contributes to your organization business outcome. Tip number two, keep, gather and keep all data and make sure you exhaust your mainframe resource. So uh, at the heart of, of, of the mainframe data collection, uh, uh, data collection challenge uh, it's, uh, is sheer volume. So millions of logs are uh, generated each day. Um, let me give you some example. I know a bank which produce um, roughly 2 billion records per day. Another one where just one production helper produce 2.4 billion records per day. And another one which uh, generate two terabytes of uh, SMF logs per day. So, uh, so that's a, a very a first point, the volume. The second point is uh, the CPU consumption. That's another point of attention because what would be the, the, the point of implementing an analytics solution that 
consume more than uh, the optimization it could provide. So uh, to avoid losing control of this flow of data, so one should collect only the, the relevant data. So collecting the right fields inside the SMF records required the uh, US and assembler expertise. But um, could, and then could you afford to spend months implementing a US data collection solution? That's the question. I think the ideal solution is to be able to manage a three to five year uh, data history. So using aggregation mechanism in order to manage uh, um, store, storage requirement to a reasonable level. And then keeping CPU utilization minimal on the ZOS and move data processing and data storage out of uh, ZOS on open system could be uh, uh, Linux or Windows, Linux on an IFR, or even in a, a, a Docker container uh, uh, running on a zip processor if you are already in uh, ZOS 2.4. Uh, tip number three, uh, keep your data in tight silos they don't like to mix. So, in fact, e effectively, each SMF record and other type of dogs gives information on a single technical aspect. And analyzing them one by one make you miss the, the big picture. So imagine you are in a, in a war room to solve a, a serious issue and with all the different support teams. Each team has only a few pieces of the puzzle that need to be put all, the, all together to, to get a global view. So how to reconcile um, effectively all the information as there is no single point of truth. That's, that's really a, 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 an issue. So you, you can touch that solving complex issues and team working effectively is difficult in this context. So uh, the, the one, is, one way to, to solve this issue is with the use of data model. Uh, a BI data model where uh, the relationship between components are recreated. And, and these are the foundation uh, to provide a holistic view of, of, of the mainframe platform and make that in the war room, everybody is on the same page. Tip number four, uh, visual are for the week. So it may seem difficult to believe, but uh, Many uh, analy analytics solutions still use access files um, or even static graphical representation that uh, require specific development for each new need. So uh, the idea is uh, it's, uh, to implement dashboard. So the added value of BI dashboard, BI dashboard, sorry, are their ability to present complex data in an easy to understand ways. So, the, so that um, every team member can discover patterns, trends, anomalies that are uh, occurring on the platform or even on the business. So data dashboard are, are made of widgets. Uh, and a widget is, is a single unit that represents one data category. So we can uh, think about uh, uh, a service delivery dashboard when you can uh, you could visualize uh, what uh, what is what are the the production uh, what do you produce during the day what do you produce during the night showing online and batch activity the resource consumption for each uh, worker type the performance the response time and batch execution time and finally the the quality of service so another strong point uh, when implementing a BI engine is that it allows to choose the information you are willing to analyze uh, by using filters and as well the ability to drill down to uh, the very detailed information in order to pin pinpoint um, the cause of, of, uh, of an issue. Uh, tip number five. Never dare to never dare, sorry, to 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 cry to try to inject a business uh, perspective in, in there. So um, we live in a world of digitalization, and uh, digitalization means working with the uh, company-wide IT ecosystem. So mainframer can no longer manage the infrastructure without 
a clear oversight of the rest of the uh, of the uh, information system. So, uh, so developing and connecting uh, to resources outside the mainframe perimeter leads to a loss of control for pure mainframer when they need more information from other IT department as well as from business line in order to anticipate the, the impact of the, of the platform. So the introduction of an analytic solution that democratizes access to mainframe knowledge, uh, reestablishes uh, active cooperation, productive dialogue between IT and business department or between uh, in fact, IT and development departments, as they start to speak the same the same language once more. Tip number six: uh, say no to Skynet and stay away from artificial intelligence. So Skynet is is mentioned in reference uh, to the Terminator franchise. So Skynet was or is a, 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 an artificial intelligence system. Uh, they saw it saw the, that uh, all humans uh, were a threat and decided to uh, uh, the human extermination. So, well, let's move to a more realistic uh, uh, view. So, AI or artificial intelligence technology, it's in fact bringing uh, automation. So, automation in uh, for searching in real time for anomalies, uh, issue incidents, alerts, and reports. Uh, and finally, gather all necessary data for troubleshooting and visualization in, in the dashboards. So I think we we think that in the near future, we expect the technology to bring root cause analysis, uh, false, false alarm prevention, because uh, and automatic remediation. So with increasing complexity uh, in the data centers and in the complex infrastructures, so IT team will have to invest in uh, uh, into uh, will have to invest into AI uh, artificial intelligence uh, driven automation uh, in order to be able to to cope with this uh, with this complexity. Uh, we have some some example. Uh, of, of what uh, what uh, AI can bring uh, currently. So tip, tip number seven, uh, cover up those costs, which I can't endure to look on. So this is in uh, reference to a line from uh, Molière's Tartuffe, which, is, which says that cover up that bottom, which I can't endure to look on. So things like that uh, often our thoughts and fill our minds with sinful thoughts. So I would think we should have chosen a William Shakespeare in a line instead, but we are, we are a French company. So um, many IT organizations are under pressure uh, uh, to justify their costs to the business to, in nowadays. And how they, um, however, uh, IT organizations are often poorly prepared uh, to provide uh, uh, information regarding cost contributors and, and service delivery. So in addition, a significant part of the financial resources are tied up in, in, in run activities. So the result is, uh, of that is there is a lack of funds for uh, um, innovation project, innovative projects. So to answer this, this challenge, it, it is necessary to design a, a structured and holistic uh, IT cost, cost management system in order to create transparencies about the cost situation and as well uh, to get an assessment of the cost effectiveness of the uh, IT services and as well to ensure uh, the, the efficient management of the cost. So, so this is this include not only the, the creation of clear transparency of, uh, of current and future cost, like you, you can see on, on the slide, but also uh, the continuous monitoring and reporting of the most important key performance indicators. So the ability to uh, analyze your total cost and usage at a high level, and then uh, dive deeper into your cost and usage to identify trends, pinpoint cost drivers, and detect anomalies is one aspect of the subject. 
uh, but budget management and cost showback are uh, other aspects that need to, to be considered uh, as well. So leave contract and pricing to the, to the pen pressure. So why should you? So especially if you consider the software contracts, which may need specific control and action to stay compliant to those contracts. Uh, so uh, if we look at the software pricing, software pricing is, uh, is quite complex and it's still representing 30 to 40% of the uh, total, total cost of ownership of, of a mainframe platform. So that's uh, something you should uh, look on. Uh, let me give you some, some insight on the IBM Z software pricing. So in fact, it all started in a very simple way. So uh, software license charge were monthly and were based on the machine size. We had the, the machine group if, if, uh, and then we had the CPU service unit and finally the, the, the MSU, we know, we know that, which is still in vigor. And then appear the, the sub capacity license charge where uh, the IBM software product were licensed based uh, upon the capacity of the LPAR where a product uh, executes. And uh, for that, they were um, introduced the, the famous uh, rolling forwards average metrics to measure each month the LPAR utilization in MSUs. And uh, this pricing was, was called uh, the uh, workload license charge. Uh, another aspect of the workload lesson charge that the charge structure is not linear, but made of, of base plus uh, now eight level of uh, pricing slopes and the, the higher the level, the lower the, the unit price in the level. And then followed many variation of subcapacity uh, sub pricing. Uh, we had the WSE with pricing plex, the integrated work, workload pricing, the mobile workload pricing, the workload pricing for cloud, the country multiplex pricing, the new application license charge, the uh, collocated application pricing uh, until 2017-2018 when IBM launched the new, pri new pricing using uh, containers to delimit the use of uh, product. So we had first the new application solution. And this new application solution introduced a new metric, uh, which is the, the MSU, M, MSU per hour, which is a, a consumption-based pricing. Uh, and then we had the dev and test pricing solution and the instant payment uh, for financial transaction. And then in 2019, we had the Taylor Fit pricing enterprise consumption. Uh, as, a, as a true alternative of the uh, rolling forwards average based pricing. So, uh, and that's only for MLC product. If we look at the uh, IPLA, OTC, VUE products, there are as well many, many different types of pricing. So, and you may be aware of, as well of the ZOS unreduced consumption. That's some, that as well you need to take care of. So, with all that uh, different types of pricing, you may, you may be confused, you may be confused. And uh, faced with this complexity in order, in order to effectively manage budget and contractual commitments or to prepare uh, for commercial negotiation, it, it, it's important to, uh, to implement uh, an IT cost and contract management system. Tip number nine, answer needs on the fly. Uh, improvisation is much, is much cooler. So a daunting challenge for most IT operation is to have a crystal ball, uh, to predict IT resource demand growth, um, then matching the demand with hardware, software, and technological adv adv advances. So once, that's been done, a, a plan and schedule needs definition and implementation, staying one step ahead of, uh, of performance degradation. So that's uh, a simplified definition of what capacity planning and management uh, mean. So uh, as a start, uh, uh, information on the past consumption could provide a, a basic a projection like uh, in the upper left, uh, uh, graph and to uh, and then from there you you could uh, you could provide a, a, a yeah a basic projection 
uh, for the future. But you, I think you, you, you need to go further and, and understand what is the, the workload behavior and, and analyze this workload behavior from there and, and from there make a workload evolution and performance simulation to, in order to define a, uh, in order to define hardware requirement and as well uh, LPAR configuration uh, needs. Tip number 10, keep knowledge for yourself, other don't care anyway. So once again, um, analytic solution that uh, democratize access to mainframe knowledge uh, uh, allows uh, uh, an active cooperation uh, between uh, between IT and, and development or between IT and business department. I've, I've got in mind an example of a, one organization that each time uh, the development is releasing a new version, um, they share uh, the IT, the mainframe team share uh, what are the consequences in the on the mainframe resource of that new version. And then they discuss in order to try to improve the performance uh, in order to uh, we, uh, at the development level in order um, to get uh, the, the real benefit of this new version in terms of new functionality and, and, and decreased uh, improved performance. And, and the, way, the way they can do that is because they are sharing the same tool, the same solution in order to, to speak the, the same language. So again, speak the same language. Uh, the, it's important to have a, 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 a business per perspective in the mainframe reports. Uh, show, back, show back your cost, show back uh, what is the, the consequences of uh, a new version or a new, a, new, a new configuration on the mainframe activity. And as well, uh, being able to simulate new business requests and work with business and development to rationalize the, the, the production. Okay, so this is the end of the, of the journey today. So um, thank you for attending the session. So if you have any question, uh, please free, feel free to ask. So you, you also can find Zetali on zetali.io and as well, you got uh, uh, my email address uh, if you would like to, to contact me. So thank you very much. So we are um, also presenting on Thursday, November the 11th at midday, same time as today. And the, the title of the topic is uh, Take Back Control of Your Mainframe Budget. And the session code is uh, 6BG. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Mark. Uh, if you have any questions for Mark, you can now unmute yourself to ask those questions. Or alternatively, you could still put them in the chat. Um, I want to uh, uh, show my appreciation. To, to Mark and the time and effort required to put a, uh, a session together. And if you could do the same by donating to uh, our one of our charities and getting yourself a raffle ticket, um, I think uh, it's a worthwhile cause and you might come away with a good, good prize. Please give your feedback. Your feedback for this session is for session 3AU. And please remember that the question uh, that asks about the length of the session, the uh, perfect uh, score is five, not nine. So be careful as you uh, read that particular question. Um, okay, so uh, if anybody's got any questions, uh, feel free to ask them now. And if there are no questions, I can end the session. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a good day. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome, Mark. Uh, see you again uh, Thursday. You. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye for okay. now. Bye-bye.